Greetings to you. This is Deputy CDA Numo Talib Al Amin from the Royal Office of Her Imperial Majesty Queen Sheba Sairab III. Today I'd like to talk a little bit about throne history, African throne history, and take you into our librariums. We'll be speaking from librarium one information that you will be contained there i'll give you a thumbnail sketch and some places to go for further information in hopes that you will spend the time to familiarize yourself with the concepts and ideas that of which we speak about the royal throne histories how it predates any other throne histories on planet earth and how civilized living came about from these kingdoms and these royal systems and these date back to the time of who you've known to come as Noah. So we're talking ancient ancient history and our histories will be found uh, at Genesis 10, I believe but, uh, starting around Genesis 10, 6 when it talks about Cush and some of the sons of uh, Noah. So the uh, she Sheba throne is the oldest known throne in the history of, world, of the world. And the empire kingdoms of Nubia in Africa are the very first kingdoms known to mankind. These are the forefather lines of all the kingdoms throughout the southern world. And they're the first in civilization and we expanded and expanded until what we know them as today. These new nations were of the Nubia Kush nation, the so-called Black Pharaoh empires of the African kingdoms that covered and ruled the entire known world. And that is, was called the Southern world. The uh, Nubia Kush empire nations, descendant lines, we're talking about over 1.4 billion population on the continent of Africa. That's 825 plus kingdoms plus many sub kingdoms that exist and this constitutes the Nubia Kush Empire nations so we're talking about family lines that date back and all funnel back to one root the Nubia thr Sheba throne of thousands of years ago the uh, sovereign imperial house of Ra Nubia Sheba has an imperial matriarch with a matriarchal system and that is the throne of thrones and it's the queendom of Sheba as well and that's the uh, ruling imperial house of Ra Asere, Pakpatsere, Keperure, Kasamsu Ra of the descendant Sheba kingdom nations. That's a mouthful but these are the kinds of words we have to fill our mouths with. We have to allow those words to sink into our inner core and uh, ask questions and then do research. What is House of Ra Asere? This Kasamsu, these are important names and the Kasamsu is a royal lineage throne name that uh, dates back to the original throne. So the matriarchal uh, Nubia Sheba throne is the oldest throne once again, uh, the oldest of the matriarchal thrones especially and the Queen of Sheba. Most of us have heard about the Queen of Sheba. Many of us thought that that Queen's name was Sheba and even more of us thought that that only existed in ancient times, ancient quote-unquote biblical times and that was something of the very very far and distant past. We had no idea, no idea that those bloodlines were still in existence and that the throne was still in existence and even more so that one sat on that throne even today. She does sit on the throne. She has been widely known and covered by those in the know and that is Queen Sheba Saira the third. I came across Queen Sheba initially uh, on the web, but then I read this Femmes magazine, it's out of France, it was 2008 edition, and they had this story about this Queen of Sheba, the Queen of the South. I, the, that title immediately struck me, 
So I tried to figure out where I'd heard of it, and then in, in reading the article, I saw where it made the reference of Matthew 12:42, and then I found a reference at Luke 30, 11, 31, about this queen of the south who would rise up against the wicked men of their evil gener of her evil generation, evil men of her generation, and literally put them in check for their ways, and her wisdom would be greater than Solomon's. Well, this Queen Sheba Saira the third, the Queen of Sheba, who sits on the Sheba throne, has come up with a plan, Project Seven Phoenix plan, that is greater than any plan I've come across in my forty some years of research, plans to revitalize the continent the continent of Africa, to assist the peoples of Africa, and to provide a model, a working model that can be replicated around the world. She calls it Project 7 Phoenix. Within that plan are the ideas and methods to eradicate poverty in all 55 countries, in all the kingdoms, simultaneously. And to that end, she has appointed royal ambassadors to go out and work in the kingdoms to assess needs, to get the input from the kingdoms as to what they need and desire and to come back and we plan and develop programs that will meet those specific needs so that every nation and kingdom is in on their rebuilding at the same time. Now back to go back, all of us, all kingdoms originated in Nubia and then we've had great migrations where we peopled and populated the world. Now, the bloodlines have not changed, so we do have the oldest of the royal bloodlines that do go back to the root throne. We call it the root throne, the original throne, the kingdom throne, and it date it goes through all the way through the tribal lines and down to the colonial era, and even in the diaspora lines of which I am a part. Now the Nubia Shiva Sovereign imperial house of Ra, that is the ruling house and that comes from the ancient Ma, M-A-A Federation and today we're known as the African Kingdoms Federation and the Federation is still under that sovereign ruling imperial matriarchal throne that's been in existence for thousands of years. Queen Sheba Saira is the third of the Shebas to sit on the throne. There have been a um, numerous empresses that sat on the throne over the years. We've had three that had one of their names Sheba. Sheba the first goes back many many thousands of years. That was the original throne. We had Sheba the second in the middle dynastic periods. For those of you who are into uh, the dynastic periods of Nile Valley civilizations that dates us back three to four thousand years and now we have Sheba the third who has been on the throne she was initially uh, installed in 2000 so here's uh, the end of a note in library one from our council of royal uh, crown council of royal elders it states we appreciate the many versions of our history that we read from outside of Africa however with all due respect, we would rather inform all of our history in accordance to our ancestors of the past and present that was of our ancestors, kingdoms, and tribes, ourselves. We know who we are and are most willing to tell the story of our history as we know it to be and integral parts of our traditions, cultures, identities, our traditional spirituality and norms and social heritage that exist even today on our continent of Africa. I'd like to go into a little deeper meaning of some of the African throne titles that we've heard about over the years and some of the inner kingdoms meanings and some of that royal terminology. And terminology is very important. Further on in the librariums there's a whole chapter dealing with terms and meanings and you can read that on your own and we will hopefully get to it later in an additional talk. <coughs> In terms of uh, titles, when we're dealing with formal titles, they're normally preceded with capital T's like the or there. 
and uh, and we have the common T when you're dealing with specific formal. Example. We would like to introduce the imperial matriarch, matriarch and their royal majesties. That would be capital T imperial and capital T their royal. Another example. His imperial highness the small t imperial prince of whatever. Or his Royal Highness, the small t, Royal Prince of, thus and such. So that is how we um, use our formal, the Imperial Matriarch and their Royal Majesties, or the Imperial Prince for an indiv the individual. The uh, bloodlines of dis the um, descended children, they carry the bloodlines of the kingdoms, and that's how our kingdoms have been in existence and stayed intact for thousands of years. And together they form the one imperial royal bloodline that traces back to the throne of Nubia, the original matriarchal throne. Okay, here's some terms. Imperial house. The imperial kingdom is the mother kingdom of the African kingdoms. And the imperial line is matriarchal. Matriarchal. That's the line of the pharaohs, the kings, the queens, the kingdoms of ancient Africa since the dawn of civilization. It's been that way and it is that way today. We are matriarchal system. Okay, African imperial empress. The imperial empress or empress of the imperial kingdoms is the most supreme imperial title of the entire nation. And the matriarch, this is the matriarchal pharaoh goddess, excuse me. And the throne mother, the, the name or title is Isis or Ast or Hathor Hetheru or Nenti in some cultures. And the goddess mother or the imperial mothers, the lines of the goddess daughter. You hear this reference to goddess, goddess. That's been our use. We've used that word for thousands of years because these were the human sons and daughters of the human living gods. Okay, the goddess line matriarchs. They're the lines that carry the throne heads. In other words, the lines that were seen as the daughters and sons of the gods. Ra, Ptah, P-T-A-H, Kanum, K-H-N-U-M. And the matriarchal goddess line, or that of the ancient mother, and these are direct bloodlines of the matriarchal imperial throne of Isis or Ast. So the goddess mother in later years was referred to as the mother of Africa. And that uh, became known and misinterpreted because people didn't know how close uh, to reality that title was. Because within the imperial, uh, the empire and the empire government, their law is sacred. The goddess, mother, or imperial empress's law is sacred. And it's the most supreme authority that exists. For we know it to be of the lines of the gods. I'd like to talk just for a moment about the uh, kingdom's geographical root. Now, originally, the kingdom of Nubia Kush, the empire kingdom, from the first millennium, through the seventh dynasty is from north, east, west, central, and south Africa. And all the descended nations that stem forth from them are nations of Nubia. Ancient and at current uh, North Sudan today. We have a greater concentration of our kingdoms throughout uh, eastern and western Africa. And that's because in antiquity, in ancient times, Sudan or Nubia or Kush stretched from the east coast or the Indian Ocean all the way across to the west coast covering the the realm or the lands below the Sahara Desert down through Central Africa. So we're talking all the way over to Liberia from Tanzania. We're talking Somalia, Ethiopia, Sudan, down to Congo, Uganda regions. So cover a wide, vast area. And our matriarchal empress comes from those original lines that stem from Nubia. 
and she wears the title Imperial Empress. Now, I mentioned uh, we have three Shebas in history, three uh, documented Shebas that sat on the throne in history, and Queen Sheba Sarai the Third is the current uh, Empress wearing that name and the title of the Queen of Sheba or the Queen of the South. The lines of the Imperial Matriarch, and these go back to the root throne, the root matriarchal thrones uh, from the time of the first Sheba throne that was installed by or installed by Cush, grandson of Noah. Lastly, I'd like to talk about the African Kingdom's Federation and where it is today. We are in the process of inviting people to join us in our task forces to become critical parts, components of us redeveloping the continent of Africa. We're looking for people with skills, with talents, with good hearts, with commitment, a willingness to work with other people. We have, we try to make no differences. The Queen makes no differences. And those of us who work with and for her try to make no differences. That's our ultimate goal, to treat each other exactly the way we want to be treated. treated. We do work within the, confines, within the confines of the rules and protocols of the Royal Office. And it's incumbent upon each and every one of us to study and know the rules, to follow the protocol, because this is how kingdoms function have functioned for thousands of years and have stood the test of time by functioning in all climates, all environments for eons peacefully. And this is the, our intent. Our big project, upcoming project that we need people in our task forces to come join us and work on are our royal tournament that will encompass uh, football, soccer as we know it in the West, and basketball. We're planning a tournament that uh, will culminate with a finals in, in a designated African country in 2014, whereby we have uh, regional competitions and those winners advancing, advancing, advancing all the way to the finals in Africa. All 55 nations will be invited to participate nations of the south world will be invited to participate and nations of the diaspora and the caribbean will be invited to participate this will kick off our project seven phoenix program which is a program to eradicate poverty on the continent we truly believe that we can do this we know that we will do this the only question at this point is will you work with us in doing this the door is open we invite you to bring your goodness, your good spirit, your time and your talents and work with us. That's all we ask. You join us, you follow the rules of protocol and our articles of decorum and help us to help the people of the world. Too, way too many children live a life with no future. We can eliminate that. We can do better. We know we can do better. You know we can do better. Together, following one plan, we can change the world. We can be that change people talk about. We can make it happen. We have a plan. We have a leader. We have groups of people. We have a system. We are working on the plan as it, at, at this very moment. We just invite you to come on board and join with us. If you have any questions, go to the Ark of Nubia post your questions, we'll be there to answer, and we'll be here for you all the way through. We hope you'll join us. I thank you for your time, and hope you will join us again. This is Deputy CDA Numo Talib al from the Royal Office of the African Kingdoms Federation. Thank you, and have a great day.